All right. So you made it through the first three videos. Now for the fun part where we test, put you to the test and show you what it's going to be like out there. So um, behind me on this side of the screen, I'll have a couple different images of scenarios you will see while you're, when it's time to put in something for the survey while you're monitoring. And then on the other side is the actual survey itself. And we'll just go through, look at a photo, and then fill, it, fill in the survey accordingly. All right, so before we talk about this photo, we're going to imagine in our minds that we just got to the trailhead. The trailhead happens to be right on the wilderness boundary. And we will be pulling out our phones and checking in on the survey because we need to start the timer for the four hours. So right here is surveyor name. That is you, the surveyor. And you can abbreviate it or you can put your whole name. And then this will say for this scenario, we are in Ravencliffs Wilderness. So we'll go the monitoring location. WZ is abbreviation for wilderness. And these are those monitoring locations you went over with Christy. We'll scroll down to Ravencliffs. Ravencliffs Trail and Ravencliffs Wilderness. And then we are putting a check in. And then with checking in, we'd like to know the day and the time. And is it a weekday, weekend slash holiday? Today is weekday, we'll say. And put in your email. And then take a look at the weather. Doesn't have to be exact. You don't need to split hairs. Just um, this will help us know if it was a fair, sunny, cloudy day. So it would be very to. So surveyors are, for people reading the data, would say this is a very likely day to have a lot of people out on the trail versus a stormy or windy, rainy day. We wouldn't expect to have as many. It's just helpful data nonetheless. There you go. And you are all checked in. Great job. So let's start over. We are walking it down the trail. Let's say we've walked for about an hour and we come to this scene behind me. This is a waterfall you can see from the trail. It's not on the trail. You'll kind of be looking down at it. And you see this group right here enjoying the waterfall. And you'll pull out your phone or tablet and put in a entry. So again, you'll need to put in your name and it should auto populate with what the last entry was. So it'll save you a little bit of time. There's your name, monitoring location, and this is a travel encounter. All right, what we'd like to know about the travel encounter is most importantly, how many people are there? So uh, we will assume that we can tell uh, that this is one family, one group. And in this group, we have one, two, three, and you might not be able to see it on your screen, but there's someone right here, and then there's someone back here. So that's five people, five in there. And then type of travel encounter, this is that extra data that we'd like to know. Use your best judgment on, on this. It doesn't have to be exact. You definitely don't need to interact with the visitors and like, ask them what they're doing out there. You can just take your best guess based on the way they're dressed and uh, the absence of big bulky gear, hiking gear. I'm gonna say that they're day hiking. And another good way to to make, make assumption, uh, assumptions like that is see how much water they're carrying or if they have a water, water filter. Most people that are through hiking, you're going to be on the AT, so there will be through, through hikers a lot, and you can tell from their gear or if they have water filter systems. And scrolling down, 
where we'd like to know about dogs. I don't see any dogs in this photo, so we'll say no dogs present. All right, good job. You got your first entry. So let's look at another scenario. This is also on Ravencliff's trail, and I'll just let you take a moment to take in the photo. There is the stream that's going adjacent to the trail, and we see one hiker right here, and this animal, I would say it's a dog. Again, we'll pull out our phones. Your name's already gonna be populated. The location will already be populated. And this is another travel encounter. Right here, we'll say one person. And looking at his gear, I'd say he is just out for the day. And yes, there's a dog present. Um, we're gonna say for the purposes of this scenario that he doesn't have a leash. I can't really tell, but we'll say there is a dog present, but it's not on a leash and click on, remember to click this to say there is only one dog. And just like that, you're done. We are zooming. Let's do a couple more. All right, what can you tell me just based on what these guys are wearing and carrying? See lots of water. They got the trekking poles. They are ready for anything. They are definitely backpacking. So for this one, we'll say we're at a different wilderness. Let's say, yeah, definitely on the AT. And I think that's, is that Brasstown? No, Blood Mountain. BM will be Brasstown. Thank you. And um, Blood Mountain will. Oh, you have it here. Okay, then maybe we did it slightly different. But yeah, I think that's Blood Mountain then. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Great, so we are at the AT from Jerry Gap to Neil's Gap. This is another travel encounter. Number of people, one, two, three. And here, out of the options, choose backpacker. No dogs visible. And we're done. Do two more. Christy, really quick, where is a monitoring location that might have a Vista? There's there's definitely one um, um, in Train Mountain Wilderness. Train Mountain. Fairly close to the shelter, about a mile from the trailhead. Oh, AT Trade tra Gap? Yeah. Great. Excellent. All right, we'll say that we are there and we had already checked in. And we are at, now take a good look at this image. This is something you might encounter at a place um, with a vista, definitely Raven's Cliffs. There'll be several people there and small, small groups, one large group or like several small, small groups. And we just want to remind you that most importantly, it's to get the number and then the secondary details are your best, best guess. So right here, take a moment to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven people. Sorry, this is a travel encounter. And we have, we are, let's assume this is one big group, seven people. Based on their clothes and gear, I'd say they are day hiking. No dogs present. And then you would submit. Now, let's say that you are very positive that these are one, one group right here. These two guys are together, and then those two closer to the, to the cliff are a separate group. So three separate groups. What we'd like you to do is just going back 
here is, of course, travel encounter. For each group, we'd like one encounter entry. So for the father and son here, one group, two people. Still day hiking, still no dogs present, submit. And then pull it out again to say your name, the same location, travel encounter. This group of three right here, three. And then day hiking, of course, of course. Don't get too in the weeds of this. Again, the most important thing is that full number. And then, of course, submit. One scenario I'd like to bring up is what's interesting about the data is that, let's say you took your, your encounters, or you, you surveyed this area, you made three entries, one for each group, and then you turn around to go back to the trailhead and you pass, and 15 minutes goes by and you pass one of those groups again, let's say the father and the son. It's been 15 minutes since you last saw them and what you'll need to do is make another encounter entry. So same trail or same monitoring location, still a travel encounter, and then you'll just record them again. Day hiking, no dogs present, submit. If it's been less than 10 minutes since you saw them, you won't need to make another entry. It has to be at least 15 minutes or more to be recounting the same people. That is because we want it to be, this is supposed to mimic what someone's visiting visitation to a wilderness would be like. So if you keep running into the same people, it with that 15 minute win or outside of that 15 minute window that helps us know how many people or how on top of everyone they are on that trail all right let's go ahead and submit that and last one is i just wanted to have a scenario where y'all saw other types of recreation users there will be hunters and anglers, horseback riders, and that is something we have a spot on the survey to account for. So one person, one hunter. Scroll down to angler hunter. No dogs present, but it would be likely that a hunter or, or even or a fisher, a fisherman would have a dog. So definitely take a second to check for that. And then, all done. I have a few small things that I thought about while you're presenting. One is that the email address um, is important so that if we have a question about the data, we can reach out to you and have a question. If we see that like, you did a record and you wrote 233 people. Was that a typo? Um, we might reach out to you. Um, and, if, and if multiple, if you're a pair, you can just choose someone as a main contact um, and then have the name and the surveyor name being like, if someone's writing an email, being like, what? how do I want to call you um, while writing an email to you asking, ask, asking about the data? Um, the, it's probably unlikely that that will happen, but that, that's a just in case. Um, the other thing is Survey123 does save this offline, and once you get back into Signal um, or back in Wi-Fi, there'll be like an outbox that you upload all your entries at when you're done. They might need to do as part of your ending process. Right. So you had a big day, a four-hour session of travel encounters solitude monitoring now it's time to check out you now this happens uh, when you hit the wilderness boundary and you're leaving you'll open your your survey your name your monitoring location that you were monitoring at time to check out you'll add the day again and now it should be four hours later so what was it 11 12 245 Oops. 
And any additional notes and comments? Um, Christy, do you have an example of a common note or comment that might show up here? Anything, anything that that you saw that wasn't captured, captured by any of the questions that we asked that you think is important to the data, like be like, there was an eclipse today, you know, like and everyone went up to go watch it. Um, something like that. Uh, any additional information that you think pertains to how something that affected the data, but it's not covered by weather and by the other categories. Great. All right. And then as always, hit submit and you're all done.